What's up, everybody? Welcome to my ranking of the Batman movies. We have 14 of these things to talk about. I'm doing the live action movies only, the theatrical release ones. So there's two animated films in there. There is a handful of films where Batman is the star. And then there is a couple of them where Batman is just a co-lead the DCEU film. So many different takes, many different interpretations, many different eras of Batman. So it needs to be said, it should go without saying, but it never does. This is a subjective list. This is just my preference. This is the version of Batman or the version of Gotham or the version of these villains that I like the most, that I resonate the most, that I have the most nostalgia for. We all grew up with different Batman. We all approach these movies differently, have different expectations. So I don't expect my list to line up with yours. Please put your list down below in the comments and we can talk about our difference of opinion and why we love the different Batman movies that we love. And really quickly before I get started on my ranking, I want to make sure that you guys check out Brian Lomax's video, my good buddy Brian. He is the Batman fanatic in our little corner of YouTube. So check out how he ranks these movies. It's gonna be a very different approach, very different uh, opinions and a very different experience with the legacy of all of these Batman films than I have. So please check out his difference of opinion down below in the video description and tell him that Cody sent you there. With that being said, starting off at number 14, the bottom of the barrel, really the only movie on this list that I probably will never watch again willingly and that is Justice League 2017. Justice League, as it's become known as. And while there are movies on this list that probably appeal less to me, this movie's just gross. This movie's just disgusting. Just, just on the surface value, it's not a very good movie. It's a very silly, goofy take on the Justice League. It was a monumental disappointment whenever it came out in the theaters that the first time we see the Justice League together, it's in a movie like this. And in the years since, since all of the cast, including uh, pretty much everybody in this movie, uh, the director, even some of the people from behind the scenes have just denounced this thing, have let out details about how horrible the production was, Joss Whedon being brought in, which there was a time I wouldn't have blamed him, but apparently he's kind of a douchebag himself. So he comes in, tries to basically artificially make this movie that Zack Snyder has shot his own by recreating the entire thing and those two tones could not mismatch more if they tried. I can't really say anything more about this. It's not a very good movie even if you can watch it, but just with how gross the situation was regarding this movie and how the studio took it from Zack Snyder in a time of ultimate tragedy, I will never watch this thing again. I fucking hate it. Number 13 for me is going to be Batman 1966. Now this is the only theatrical released Batman movie that I chose not to review because I have never liked the 60s era Batman. I, when I grow up in an era where I like the darker, more serious tone of Batman, even when I was a kid, I liked that more. <laughs> you know, I, I, I wanted something that was serious. The Batman animated series, certainly. I've just never really been able to get behind the goofy, campy side of Batman with the pow bang and the little Batman dance. I know there's an era of people that grew up with this that adore it, that have a lot of nostalgia for it. I know there's even people that are my age or a little bit older that have gone back and watched it and can appreciate it on its own merit. I'm just not somebody that can. I did watch this film. There's certainly some goofy fun to be had laughing at Batman taking on a rubber shark and stuff like that. but. Just, it's a movie I'll never watch again. It's a movie that I get no enjoyment out of. It's just not for me. Number 12 is going to be Batman and Robin. Now there's gonna be some people upset that I put this above 66, but I was six years old when this movie came out. I adored this movie for a long time when I was a kid. Arnold Schwarzenegger in a Batman movie, I mean, that was like God's gift to me when I was six years old. So despite the fact that this movie is absolutely terrible, that it is goofy as all hell, that it is campy as all hell, that Arnold Schwarzenegger speaks in puns, that George Clooney gives possibly the worst performance that we've ever seen as a Batman, which is, you know, more so the fault of the movie, but still, that is a fact. The villains are just, wow, that version of Bane, okay, sure. This killed Batman movies for almost a decade. And it kind of, for a while there, killed anybody's hope for the comic book movie genre until movies like Blade and X-Men and Spider-Man kind of brought us out of that funk. So this is a movie that I will never argue with anybody. It is terrible. 
but I would be lying to you if I did not say that I didn't love it just a little bit because of that little piece of nostalgia, that little child inside of me that I was six years old and just watched this movie on loop. And I can still watch this movie and get a little bit of a kick out of it just recreating that experience that I had as a kid. Number 11 is another movie that I have a lot of nostalgia for, and that is Batman Forever. Now, this is certainly the better of the two Schumacher films. I don't think anybody would argue that. Uh, but it's also a little bit more disappointing in certain ways to go back to because there was a lot of potential in this movie. There was like a three hour cut of this that got hacked down. It was all action sequences. It was all flash and color and neon. And there was actually a pretty interesting storyline that was built into this with Bruce Wayne and his trauma and his guilt over his parents' death. And there was going to be some revelations with that. We have yet to see the cut of that film, but uh, the film that we do have, Val Kilmer is fine as Batman. Uh, I think he's better as Bruce Wayne than he is Batman. I like 90s era Jim Carrey, even though the Riddler is basically just Jim Carrey in this movie. Jim Carrey did not become the Riddler. Uh, I, I, there's something nostalgic about going back to that classic golden age of Jim Carrey when he was just on top of the comedy world. Tommy Lee Jones, fine. He's okay as Two-Face, even though he's doing his best Jack Nicholson impersonation. And there's just a lot of color in this movie. The action sequences are pretty entertaining. There's a lot of visual, interesting things going on on screen. It's a very different take on Gotham and the world of Batman. And like I said with Batman and Robin, I still have a lot of nostalgia for this movie because unfortunately the Schumacher era was my era of Batman. That's what I grew up with as a kid. And so... I have fun with this one. You know, it, it's not a good movie, but I can watch it, and despite all of the flaws, just like with Batman and Robin, I can still get a little bit of a kick out of it, trying to kind of revisit my childhood in a way. Number 10 for me is going to be Lego Batman movie. Now, this is a really good animated film. Putting it this low on this list is not meant to be a knock. Honestly, from Batman Forever up, I think these are all mediocre to great, some of the best of all time films. So only the bottom three I would consider bad films. Lego Batman movie I enjoyed a lot when I first saw it. I reviewed it. It was one of the earlier reviews on this channel. I gave it a very good rating. I think that the humor was good. The, he was a standout character in the Lego movie, so we all kind of wanted to see him in his own universe. There's a ton of different Batman and DC villains. There's also just Warner Brothers characters thrown in here. It's a goofy, fun time, but I've never really had the desire to rewatch it. I've rewatched the Lego movie probably five or six times. I have not really rewatched, the, aside from before I did this list, I had not rewatched. Lego Batman movie since I saw it in theaters. So I'm just somebody that as I've grown up, I'm less inclined to pick up an animated film. That's just who I am. You know, there's one movie on this list that's going to be an exception to that rule, but I much prefer watching mediocre to bad live action films over watching incredible animated films. And I would just say this is a good animated film. Number nine. Ooh, this is going to hurt. Okay. Batman 1989. I know, some of you guys grew up with this, you still love it, it's your favorite Batman, all of that. Technically, I grew up with these films too. Even though the Schumacher ones were the ones that I was able to see in theaters and have that experience with, I was born in 1990, so I just missed the boat on this one. I never really got into the two Tim Burton films, uh, even as a kid. As a kid, as a teenager, as a young adult, as a 32-year-old man, I still do not really get into this, and a lot of that's because I just don't really get into Tim Burton. I'm not a fan of his. There's maybe two, three movies of his I would say that I mildly enjoy. The rest of them I really just don't like. He just does not jive with my style. I, I appreciate his art direction. I appreciate the fact that he always has a very artistic vision. You can look at a movie and in two seconds tell it's a Tim Burton film. And given credit where credit is due, his Batman film not only like revolutionized Batman in a large way, but also revolutionized comic book films. It's a very important movie and it's a very, it's a huge movie for a lot of you people. I'm just not one of those. Every time I watch this movie, I like Michael Keaton in the role. Of course, I like Jack Nicholson in the role of Joker. But beyond that, I think that the script and the story is very, very weak. And back in 1989, it was the shit. I get it. But nowadays you watch it and even, you know, years ago you watch it. There's just serious script issues with this movie. There's not really much of a story going on here. And so while I love these two characters, while I appreciate this vision of them, this is a movie that I will always say I appreciate more than I actually enjoy. Number eight, huge shock for me is Batman Returns. Now, 
a lot of what I just said about Batman you can apply to this. But I have always, always thought that the 1989 Batman was better than Batman Returns. I, that's always just been a fact in my head. I actually reviewed Batman Returns a few years ago before I ever reviewed any of the older Batman films because my buddy Brian Lomax, who I'm doing a collab with on this video, it was like a Secret Santa thing. He wanted me to do that for Christmas and I, I, we all kind of chose each other's movies. And I watched this and I was like, oh, this is it's just not as good as 1989. You know, it's just weird. It's just like a Tim Burton film. This isn't a Batman film. But when I watched it this time, it's almost like I appreciated the fact that it was a little bit more balls out. I appreciated the fact that it was weirder, that it was a lot darker, that it was creepier, that it was just more fucked up. These really extreme interpretations of Penguin and Catwoman. I like Catwoman certainly a lot more than I do Penguin, but there's something about it that's just so distinct that it can only be this movie that it kind of stood out to me more and I kind of enjoyed it more this time rewatching it than I think I've ever enjoyed watching this film. And of the two, I think this one has a lot more going on. There's a lot more story moving through. There's a lot more of a coherent script. It's still goofy as all hell, but I feel like the plot keeps propelling forward in it with all the different characters, the different plots that we have going on. And so I was more entertained by this one. It's still a movie that I would never call one of my favorites. It's still versions of these characters that certainly are not the versions that I kind of hold into my head canon, but I enjoyed Batman Returns a lot more this time than I remember ever enjoying it. Number seven is going to be Batman v Superman, and I am only considering the Ultimate Edition. The Theatrical Edition, I will never watch again. I don't even acknowledge it. So this is the Ultimate Edition. This is where it fits for me. While I absolutely love Ben Affleck's Batman, I absolutely love Henry Cavill's Superman. I think that this is a very visually impressive movie. It's a very visually striking movie. Zack Snyder knows how to do shots. This guy is a visual storyteller in every sense of the word. I think there's a lot of ambition in this film that I, I really am impressed at and I really do value. Even though they don't quite reach the, uh, the, the lengths that they are going for in this movie in every single aspect, I still appreciate the fact that they went for it. I will always prefer ambition that doesn't quite get there over a movie that meets its goal but is extremely safe and vanilla. And so, uh, even the introduction of Wonder Woman, like I got mixed on it. I love Gal Gadot in the role. I think she's well utilized in the film, but I think she's kind of a distraction as well. I really do enjoy this film. I, I think that it's a good time. It's not necessarily the most rewatchable on this list because it's very long, it's very dark, it's very taxing, but I do enjoy it. And I will say this has the greatest Batman action sequence that we have ever seen, possibly will ever see. That, that Batman warehouse fight is just fucking incredible. Unfortunately, I cannot stand the new version of Lex Luthor, Jesse Eisenberg, and their new interpretation. I, I just grates on my nerves. I don't get it. I understand that he went for it. He did exactly what they wanted him to do, so I don't blame Jesse Eisenberg, but I just don't get into this version of Lex Luthor. I also think the movie's way overstuffed. I mean, it was very clear that WB was trying to rush and trying to get to the Justice League movie as fast as possible, so this should have been like movie five after Man of Steel, but they just tried to introduce Batman, follow up Man of Steel, introduce Wonder Woman, tease the Justice League, do the death of Superman storyline, introduce Lex Luthor, introduce Steppenwolf, all, everything in one movie, and you feel it. Now, I, I think that a couple of tweaks in this movie, I think they might have pulled it off. They might have pulled off getting all of that set up in one film. But the film that we have, even the Ultimate Edition, there's things about it that will never improve for me no matter what cut we get. So this is a film that is very flawed, but I really appreciate the ambition and I fucking love Ben Affleck's Batman. Number six is gonna be The Dark Knight Rises. Now, I love this film. I love Tom Hardy's Bane. He's one of my favorite Batman villains. Uh, I really like the storyline that we go on here. Years later, a physically broken Batman has to come back into the fold, literally gets broken, has to work his way back up to save the city. Uh, I love Anne Hathaway's Catwoman as well. Uh, Story-wise, I love the ambition in this one. Again, like BVS, this thing shoots for the stars. Doesn't quite reach it, but I always appreciate ambition. The thing that holds this movie back for me is that especially with Christopher Nolan, with the standards that he has set in our mind for so long before this movie came out, is that he was a guy that always had these 
flawless, if not damn near flawless scripts. Everything worked, everything worked back into itself. There was never plot holes, there was never reaches of logic, there was never cheating until this movie. And there was a lot of things in this, in the narrative that it felt like he just kind of had to make work because he needed to finish out this movie the way that he wanted to finish it. I still don't know, nor will we probably ever know if the death of Heath Ledger maybe fast-tracked him closing out this, this trilogy. Maybe he planned four films and then we had to kind of squeeze him into two. I've always felt like the first half of this movie with Batman getting broken and Bane letting everybody out of Blackgate prison felt like its own story. And then Batman coming back was another story. Uh, you could easily, in my mind, make this two films and flesh it out a lot better. But because it's one, there's just a lot of logic gaps here with Batman being able to get out of this this little hole in the ground with a child being the one that got out before him, making this way, 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 way out of realism gap. Uh, even him getting back to Gotham, I've always had questions with just a lot of conveniences here. But I love a lot more in this movie than I have problems with. Talia Al Ghul, that's another one, you know, <laughs> the death scene. So again, like BVS, this movie's flawed. You know, this movie's certainly flawed, and it's disappointing that we couldn't close this out as a, what I would call an absolutely perfect trilogy, but it's damn near perfect. I mean, God, Dark Knight Rises is still better than most directors could do on their best day, so it's still a movie that I love, despite some of its shortcomings. Number five is going to be Zack Snyder's Justice League. Now, I will say up front, I am not nearly as high on this movie as some Zack Snyder fans are. Uh, it seems like a lot of people are ready to hand this Oscar for uh, greatest movie ever made to this film just because they got to see it. But I love the fact that this thing exists. I love the fact that Zack was able to complete his film, that he was able to show his fans what the intention was and to be able to kind of right the wrongs that were done to him by Warner Brothers. You know, it's a movie that I think is a big precedent. It's a precedent in a good way and in a bad way in a lot of, in a lot of different aspects, but I think it's a good precedent that for what was done to this guy during the production of Justice League, and even during the production of Batman v Superman with them hacking that to fucking hell and throwing it in theaters, that this was kind of a redemption for, for Zack Snyder. Still a movie that not a lot of people are going to appreciate uh, be, if they're not a fan of Zack Snyder, but I think that it's a movie that I would love to hear anybody try to tell me an argument about why Justice League is a better version of the movie than this. I think this movie improves on every single thing from 2017. And when you have this film, it actually retroactively makes Man of Steel and especially Batman v Superman make a lot more sense and actually enriches them for rewatches after you see where things were heading. I think that all of the characters here, from the ones that we've already met, like Ben Affleck, Henry Cavill, Gal Gadot, are all great, but including the new ones. When you get Aquaman and The Flash and Cyborg, they're great in this movie. I really like the epic storytelling here. This is, if any movie in the comic book genre can be accused of being an epic, this is the one. I mean, aside from the four hour runtime, just the scope of what is going on from moving to Themyscira to the whole battle with Steppenwolf to re revitalizing Superman and the whole fight with him and then going back against Steppenwolf and showing dark side at the end of it leading up to a movie that jury's still out you know maybe one day we'll get to see a another movie we'll get to see what happens with this but this might be it but it's a film that I think is a movie that's deserving of the title of Justice League. You know, it's still not the most rewatchable movie for me. I can't tell you when the next time I'm gonna watch a four hour movie, despite how much I like it is. And I certainly like it more when, um, talking specifically about Batman movies, when Batman is the star, but I think that it really completes his arc, uh, Ben Affleck's Batman, and I think that Henry Cavill, it kind of completes his arc in a certain way too. So it's a movie that I'm really glad that exists. I'm really glad that I got to see it. Number four, Batman Mask of the Phantasm. Now, despite all the bullshit that I just said a few minutes ago about animated films, this is one that I have always loved, that I have always cherished, and even as an adult, I still will re-watch this thing every couple of years. I could not wait to watch this and review it last week. This is still one of the best Batman films, one of the best Batman stories that has ever been theatrically released. I mean, even with something epic like Justice League, even with the Batman that we just saw, 
even with the Nolan trilogy. This still stacks up in that conversation because of how incredible the story is. I mean, the Batman animated series might be the greatest animated series of all time. It's certainly always been one of my favorites, especially to revisit. And I just love the way that this movie focuses on Bruce Wayne and focuses on Batman. I didn't say this, but a lot of the movies down below, like the Schumacher films and especially the Burton films, those feel like the villains movies. Batman feels like a side character in his own films, and that's always something that bugs me. Even The Dark Knight and The Dark Knight Rises has that problem for me. This is one of the movies that does not have that problem. It's about Bruce Wayne. It's about his psychology. It's about his past. You get a little bit of an origin here. You get caught up in present day when he's still conflicted about whether or not he made the right decision with Andrea, whether or not to be Batman or not. And then you have the whole villain of the phantasm that comes in that is quite literally vengeance. It kind of mirrors the storyline that we go on in the Batman uh, 2022 here in a certain way to where he gets to see this dark reflection of who he is. He gets to see somebody that has the same motivation that he has, but they don't have that rule to keep them in check. They're out murdering gangsters, and he's out trying to fight crime, make Gotham a better place. And so it's just a really mature and a really effective storyline to tell in an animated film that was meant for kids. And the Phantasm is one of my favorite Batman villains, and I, for just being in this one movie, I'm still shocked for such an iconic villain how we haven't had a new version of this, even in live action or in a cartoon. And so, so many things about this movie, I think it's a, it's a flawless animated film, pretty much. I mean, the only thing about this that ever bugs me is that we never get to see Phantasm again. We never get like a, a wrap up of that storyline. It's left very much open, and even in the animated series, they never addressed it again. So that's the only thing that I could ever say negative about this. This movie is fucking incredible. Now we're at the top three, and guys, at this point, you're picking your favorite children. I mean, these are all cream of the crop, not only best of the best Batman movies, but best of the best of the genre. Best of the best as far as films in general. So very passionate takes on which of these three are your favorite, even if the top three that I have here aren't your favorites. Even like if you're 89, Batman 89 is your favorite. Very passionate people with that one. So there's reasons why I have them in order that I'll get into. But my number three is going to be The Dark Knight. Now, I adored this fucking movie just as much as anybody else when it first came out. I rewatched the hell out of it. I was like, this is the new standard for comic book films. Like, if you don't come to this, you're not even playing in the same ballpark. This is just a whole other level. Almost feels insulting to call it a comic book film. It's so masterful. Absolutely love Heath Ledger's Joker. Who doesn't? Possibly the best Batman villain we'll ever see as far as live action. Love Christian Bale in the role. Always have, always will. Uh, I love all the side characters from Alfred to uh, Morgan Freeman, and you have Gary Oldman in the role of Gordon. I mean, the movie was just casted perfectly. The, this Nolan universe was casted perfectly, and this is a crime thriller with Batman in it. It's like a Batman version of Heat, which is just fucking awesome. And even Aaron Eckhart, you know, I always fail to mention him first, but you know, Aaron Eck Eckhart as Two-Face is highly underrated. It's unfortunate that he's in a movie with a performance like Ledger's Joker because I think he gives damn near as great of a performance in his role, but he is always overshadowed in the conversation, so got to give him a shout out as well. Where I have problems with this movie, and they are nitpick level problems. Like, there's not these huge gaping issues with this movie. There's things that always bug me a little bit when I watch it. One is nobody's fault, but I always get this bittersweet feeling when I watch this, especially when I get towards the end when Joker's hanging upside down and that's the last we ever see him because of the unfortunate death of Heath Ledger. I think that this character was made to be a recurring character and when you get to the end of this film and you know that you're never seeing this character again, this is the last scene, it always takes away from the experience for me. And I, it's nobody's fault. I mean, it's not the movie's fault. It's not Heath Ledger's fault. It's not no one's fault. It's just the way that it is. It, it always feels like this was the beginning and we never got anything past this. So it, that's always a bit of my uh, a knock for my movie viewing experience when I watch this. I always have a little bit of a logic issue as well with the last few minutes of this movie to where Batman has to take the fall for the death of Harvey Dent. I've I've had it explained to me a couple different times. I just always fail to see why that was the only route. I mean, they have all this chaos going on. They have Joker's people everywhere in the city. Harvey Dent ends up dead, and Batman is the only logical explanation for who killed him. I mean, fuck, I, I, the Joker killed him. The Joker killed him. One of the Joker people killed him. Like, I just, 
I don't know. I always have a bit of a logic issue with that. I know some people think that that's nuts, but I genuinely do. I don't like Maggie Gyllenhaal in the role of Rachel as much as I do Katie Holmes. I know that's a bit of a hot take. I think that Katie Holmes was really good in the first movie. I don't understand why everybody gives her so much shit. And I think that she has more chemistry with Bruce Wayne than Maggie Gyllenhaal. I mean, Maggie Gyllenhaal's a great actress. There's nothing wrong with her performance, but I always prefer Katie Holmes in the role. So those are really my only issues with this film. The only other thing that I will say, which certainly grates on my experience a little bit, is that this movie gets a little bit of the same treatment as Halloween 1978 to where it's one of the best of the best, it's an absolute classic, but the people that just hold it up to the sky like it's greater than their firstborn child just are insufferable. And it just, it makes the movie, it makes the contrarian in me not want to hold it as my favorite. And it's something to where, even though I love it, it's like, I feel like you can't have a single conversation about best Batman or best comic book without somebody just screaming, like, it's the Dark Knight! Nothing else, nothing else comes close, it's the Dark Knight. Fuck, dude, we have had a ton of amazing movies since the Dark Knight. Can you just, just tone it down a little bit? That's just, that's the experience that I have with Dark Knight fanatics. It's just like, okay, it, it's, it's fucking awesome, but goddamn, it's not like the most perfect thing ever made on Earth. That's just a me thing. Anyway, number three, Dark Knight. Number two, and I did have to debate on this a little bit because they're both, my number one and my number two are great for very different ways. But I ultimately landed on number two being Batman Begins. Batman Begins is my favorite of the Nolan trilogy as of this moment and has been for a while because it's a Batman story and it's a Batman movie and it's a Batman focused movie. This is a movie about Bruce Wayne becoming Batman. This is about Batman becoming the symbol of fear for criminals in Gotham, becoming the symbol of hope for the citizens of Gotham. Even though you get amazing villains like Ra's al Ghul, like Scarecrow, like, uh, I wouldn't, amazing, but you know, Falcone, good villain. Even though we have those characters that could easily steal the spotlight, like they let the villains do in the next two Nolan films, this still feels like a very Bruce Wayne and Batman focused movie. The villains are here to complement his story, his journey, his arc, his character development. They're not here to steal the spotlight from him. And so I always love that. I love the character of Batman more than any other comic book character. So when I go to a Batman film, I want to see Batman. The villains are fucking amazing. Best rogues gallery in comic book history. But I want it to stay focused on Batman. And so this is the only movie for me in the Nolan trilogy that truly does that. I love the origins. It's possibly the best origin story that we've gotten in comic books. Uh, I love the villains and the storyline with Fear and the whole plot twist with Ra's al Ghul and just everything about this is great. The only flaws that I have with it, which I kind of have with the whole Dark Knight trilogy, but more so with this film than any of them, is the action sequences I don't think are shot particularly well. The, the way that it's kind of quick cut and everything like that. Not really a big fan of that. And, and retroactively, after watching the Batman um, warehouse scene in BVS, I, I'd like them even less in the Nolan trilogy. Also, I absolutely adore this Batman suit. I think it's the best looking Batman suit in the trilogy, but you go back to that stiff neck thing that drives me nuts from 1989. And finally, something that I did not want to mention three times, but I do not like the Bale Batman voice. Uh, as a kid, when I first saw these, as a teenager, it didn't really bug me all that much. I was like, oh, that's interesting, that's different. The more that I've rewatched this film, the, the more that I don't like it. Just, oh, it, 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 it it's so, easy to make fun of. I understand the logic behind it. I understand the stylistic choice. I understand what they were going for. I don't hate it. It doesn't kill the movie for me like it does some people that I know, but I would be lying if I said that I like it because I don't. But my number one, and guys, this might be the first time I've ever done this. Somebody's got to fact check me down below. I know one of you guys know. I have never, to my recollection, walked into a new film in a franchise that I love and immediately declared that one as the best. I tend to roll my eyes at people that do that because there's a lot of people out there that do that every single time. Just because it's new, it's the best. They get like this, the, this newness goggles. And I always kind of put myself in check when I go and see new films. And even though I might love them, I always put myself in check. I'm like, eh, but I got, I got to give it time. I got to give it time to rewatch it. I'm not ready to declare it as the best because I've had seven, eight years, 20 years with this movie. 
And that was very much the conflict that I had in my head with this list. But after seeing the movie twice and still having the desire to see it a third time, which I have not done since 2003 when Signs came out, I think this movie is fucking masterpiece. I, I think that it is perfect. I think it's the best Batman movie. I, I genuinely do. Uh, that, that's something that I don't do. <laughs> I, I gave it a five out of five. I don't think I've ever given a new film five out of five. I've given very few films in general five out of five, but certainly never walked out of a brand new film and gave it to it. And so uh, it just reassured me after watching it the second time that I wasn't crazy, that I wasn't just up on the hype. I watched this in Robert Pattinson's Batman, Paul Dano's Riddler, all of the side characters, especially Jeffrey Wright's um, Gordon and Colin Farrell's Penguin, are just, it's incredibly cast, perfectly cast all the way around. The tone and the approach that they go for, this dark, seedy, noir, detective murder mystery, is exactly what I have wanted out of Batman for decades now. This serial killer, jigsaw, ghost face style of Riddler is actually a crazy little idea that I had back in the day playing Arkham City when I was going around and doing all these little devices to get the Riddler trophies. I was like, that would be fucking cool if they did like a really like fucked up horror take on this character eventually. And we got one. I, I legitimately was like, I, I feel like my house is bugged. I said that in my review. The way that they characterize Gotham here and the corruption in Gotham and how many layers it has to that and how that works its way into the story between Riddler and Batman was brilliant. The reveals in the movie, some of them surprising, some of them not so much, are still just very well crafted. And the movie for being three hours damn near long, especially the second time I watched it, it flies by. It's a movie that does not, for me, feels like it ever really loses its pace. It doesn't feel like there is a lot of extra shit here that needs to be cut. And I'm typically somebody that would say that. I'm like, ah, oh, three out, yeah, you could have taken that out. You know, we don't, do we need that scene? You could have shortened it. This movie, I'm like, no, I would have taken more. And, and even the fact that the way that the movie is kind of laid out like a chapter book to where it very much feels like chapters of the story are beginning and ending at various points in the film to the point where you get to the conclusion of the Riddler storyline for you know the, the climax of the Riddler storyline that that where the the heightened actions are at its peak and we still have a 30 minute you know action sequence struggle plot epilogue everything to go through and I think that that is brilliant the way that they do it where sometimes that would feel superfluous to me it feels like it's necessary it feels like it's deliberate like it was a stylistic choice and it works for me. So the bat suit, the, the Batmobile, my favorite of all of them. And again, I'm not somebody that tends to declare favorites on the new shit, but I love this Batmobile and I love this bat suit. And I think that it leaves us in a place where there is so much potential for these characters, for this world, for this franchise, that I cannot wait to see what is next. I cannot wait to see how this Batman evolves, how this Gotham evolves, what new villains, what new takes on these villains we're gonna see. The different HBO Max shows that they're talking about with the Arkham Asylum show and maybe a GCPD show if they're not the same thing and the Penguin getting his own show. I cannot wait to watch those. I mean, this just kicked off a whole brand new era of Batman that I am on cloud nine for. So while I understand some people's issues with this movie. Uh, while I understand that a lot of you love a particular movie that is lower on this list so much that a new film will never overtake that because of the time that you have had to enjoy it and love it and hold it true to you, this is my favorite Batman movie. It is my number one. So what do you guys think? What is your ranking of the Batman films? Let me know down below your list. I am going to be doing a ranking of the Batman actors as well as all of the live action villains. And if those are successful, if you guys are wanting more, if you guys show up in droves and are just having a blast talking Batman along with me, I might decide to do more. Maybe I'll rank the Batmobiles and the Batsuits, but those are the ones for sure that I am doing over the next couple of days. So definitely like and share this video and hit that subscribe button if you are a fan of Batman and wanna see that future content. Be sure to check out Brian Lomax's video. His link will be down in the video description as well. He's also gonna be doing those rankings, so we're probably gonna line up our releases for both of those as well. 
And as always, guys, thank you for watching. And remember, opinions are like assholes, but that doesn't mean that you have to be.